Good morning, friends. Welcome to this new video. Today I'm on a mission to plant all of my summer bulbs and tubers in my container garden, but the weather is pretty terrible. Uh, but it's not gonna get any better anytime soon, so I have to finish it all today. And I'm sorry, you will have to bear with me and with this crazy wind in today's video. So I have two boxes of all kinds of bulbs, and I really wanna just finish it all today. So this is not gonna be like a proper tutorial because I have all kinds of things to plant, but I'll try to share with you some tips and informations, uh, nonetheless you know as i'm planting all of this but you can find some specific tutorials on my channel already i have a tutorial on how to plant begonia tubers how to plant lily bulbs how to plant buried perennials all of these videos are completely for free and available to everyone and then recently i also posted a specific video for my members for the silver members on how to plant caladiums and prevent them from rotting uh, so uh, let's begin and i think i will just go like category of bulbs by category of bulbs you know to make it simple and quick and efficient and as I plant all of this I'm gonna share with you everything that I do and uh, everything that I use to start these plants from tubers so let's go all right so let's start with dahlias and now this is pretty special for me this year that I get to plant dahlias in my own garden as well because those of you who follow me for a while know that my garden is in the shade for most of the day it's northeast facing so it gets only a couple of hours of morning sunlight and dahlias need at least six hours of direct sunlight in order to grow healthy and to produce beautifully um, I've tried dahlias in the past in my own garden it never really worked obviously because there's not enough sunlight but last year I planted just one random dahlia tuber and I figured what if I do a little trick so i overturned one pot placed that dahlia pot on top of that pot so that it can catch as much morning sunlight as possible and the dahlia actually bloomed you know it remained very short and very small but it produced some flowers and it was seriously the highlight of my summer last year so i'm very happy that i get to plant dahlias in my own garden this year as well because you know it's always sad when you plant them for other people and you don't get to enjoy them in your own garden especially when it's like one of your favorite flowers so i'm really happy to repeated this experiment this year as well. So I have Dahlia Famoso, Dahlia Caitlin's Joy and Dahlia Wine Eyed Jill. Now I prefer to start my dahlias directly in their final containers. If you live in a colder climate, um, might be a good idea to start them earlier in the spring and then to transplant them uh, as young plants once the risk of frost has passed. I don't like to bother with that. I just plant them directly in their final containers. And in my experience, they are, they, you know, when you plant them directly in their final container, when the weather is warm already, they just start to grow immediately and they bloom very, very rapidly. So you don't really like miss out on anything. Those dahlias catch up to those ones started earlier pretty, pretty rapidly. So in my experience, it doesn't really change much. So if you are still thinking about planting dahlias, you still have plenty of time to plant them. Uh, I planted dahlias sometimes even in, in June and they will still bloom for me in summer. So okay, so for my dahlias, I'm using containers that are about 30 centimeters tall and wide. I place mesh hole pad at the bottom of each drainage hole to prevent soil from coming out of the pot. Um, and now for the potting mix, dahlias like slightly acidic soil. So I'm using multi-purpose potting mix and I'm mixing it with a little bit of ericaceous soil. So dahlias are pretty easy to plant. You can't really make a mistake uh, planting, you know, bulb or tuber upside down like it could happen with other bulbs and tubers. It's pretty, pretty easy to tell. Um, all of those bulbous tuberous roots are facing down and you can search for some new fresh growth. I have some new fresh growth starting to appear just here. So obviously those growth points need to be facing upwards and you still have a part of that old stem that indicates, you know, how the bulb, how the tuber should be planted. So I'm just gonna gently spread all of those tuberous roots, just like that. And then we're just gonna cover it with a multi-purpose potting mix. So the tubers are planted just below the soil surface. Uh, 
All right, so moving on, I have like 30 begonia tubers uh, to start. And the reason why I have so many is because I figured that this year I want to keep my summer planters, so these planters on the railing, really cheap, really simple and really low maintenance. So I figured I'm going to grow a lot of begonias and instead of buying those begonias at the garden center or at the nursery, I'm going to start my own from tubers. So I have one container um, left because I just removed it uh, from back there where I just placed my new privacy screen. So I'm gonna squeeze in all of those tubers into this one container, uh, start them here, let them put on some growth. And then once I'm ready to transplant them and once I'm ready to create those summer compositions, I'm gonna transfer them from this container to the railing planters. So here again, I'm using multi-purpose potting mix and making mess all over the place as per usual. Okay, so the begonia that I picked for my summer planters is a really beautiful pink trailing begonia called Begonia Cascade Florence. I believe that's how you pronounce it, might be wrong, but uh, I will put the name on the screen to not confuse anyone with a wrong pronunciation. All right, oh, beautiful tubers. I love it when the tubers are like really large and beautiful. If you have the chance to pick your own, if you buy them at the garden center or at the nursery, always go for the biggest tubers. Obviously, the bigger the tuber, the more beautiful, the larger plant you will have. And these already started to, to produce some new fresh growth. So it's really easy to tell how to plant them. But generally, as you can see, the begonias are kind of like a disc shaped and that hollow part always faces up, but really easy to tell here since they are already starting to grow, which is Amazing, beautiful quality tubers. These are from Peter Nyssen. Um, discovered Peter Nyssen in the spring. For the first time, I ordered my spring bulbs from Peter Nyssen and highly recommend great quality bulbs. So as I said, the only reason why I'm squeezing those tubers so close to one another is because I'm gonna be transplanting them in a couple of weeks to their final pots. But if you were to plant your begonia tubers permanently in a container, I would space them at least 15, 10, 15 centimeters apart, just like that if they were planted permanently. But since they are not, I just need to store them here. All right, all the begonia tubers are planted and oh my goodness, you guys, sometimes I feel like I could open a nursery here, <laughs> given how many plants I plant. But uh, last thing to do, to cover them with a thin layer of potting mix. This one already started to sprout, so we'll let that little stem out of the soil. Looks a little bit funny. Okay, and I'm gonna water everything at the end. All right, and now time for Hadicum gardnerianum. It's a tropical plant that I absolutely fell in love with when I visited one of the botanical gardens in the south of France, and I figured I need to grow it on my balcony. It's absolutely beautiful. It smells divine. So I really wanna give it a try. I've never grown it before. Um, so, so this is how the rhizome looks like. I'm searching for some growth points, maybe. I can see something starting to, to grow in here. So Hadicum needs to be planted on its side, just below the soil surface. So just like that. And it's done. And I used multi-purpose potting mix, just like for the other plants that I planted today. All right, and the last thing that I have to plant today are eryngiums. Um, now, I don't think I will keep these for my balcony. Uh, I remember planting Orangium like years and years and years ago and they didn't do really well because they usually need full sun exposure. Um, so I think I'm just gonna plant them and probably give them to someone. My parents-in-law, they have a sunny balcony, so I might plant them on their balcony. So I just need to get them planted right now because as you can see, they started to grow in their bags, those poor things. So I just want to, you know, plant them in fresh soil, let them grow a little bit, and then I will divide them. So all of them will go in one container. And then once I'm ready to transplant them to their final pots, once I find them uh, a suitable home, I'm gonna take them out of this pot and give them individual pots or transplant them to a larger container. So it, 
when you receive your erindiums, it can be tricky to tell which side is up, which side is down. But I mean, here it's pretty obvious because they started to grow already. So this one, as you can see, it started to grow on the side, um, but it should correct itself, you know, because now that it's facing the light properly, it should straighten up a little bit. All right, so now the last thing to do is to water everything. It looks a little bit chaotic, but I guess that's always how it goes when we transition from one season to another and there's a lot of planting involved. So I'm gonna water everything, just plain water, no fertilizer, because none of these plants are actively growing yet. So I just wanna water them initially and then be very careful with watering because tubers are prone to rot. So you don't wanna overwater them. You want the soil to be moist, but not too wet so don't water them too often and don't give them too much water until they start actively growing Okay, you guys, it's done. I'm done with this wind and with this crazy weather conditions this spring. Impossible to do anything in the garden recently. But I hope that you found some helpful information in today's video and that it will help you plant your own summer bulbs. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see each other in the next one.